I revised the CR2032 battery backup solution for this old 286 motherboard, and I made the revised PCB with today's sponsor, PCBWay. That motherboard had one of these 3.6 volt NICAD VARTA batteries that ended up leaking, similar to these, because the motherboard is probably close to 35 years old. So last year I made a little board with a diode and a CR2032 battery to at least give me 3 volts of battery backup minus the diode drop, similar to these types of solutions. So the idea is in the original system, the motherboard might have something near 5 volts, which can recharge a 3.6 volt rechargeable when powered up. And when powered down, the 3.6 volt battery provides battery backup for anything like the CMOS configuration, maybe a real-time clock and calendar. But when replacing it with a non-rechargeable coin cell, we need some sort of device for reverse current blocking, like a diode, so that when the motherboard is powered up and there's going to be close to 5 volts here, we don't want it to try to charge this 3 volt coin cell. And we're already operating at a disadvantage, being a 3 volt coin cell plus a diode drop less voltage available. This battery is going to only last so long before it can no longer do the backup. And diodes are going to have a reverse leakage current, so we can only allow so much current to leak back through this diode and prevent overcharging this battery. As an example, the datasheet for this Energizer coin cell says 1 microamp would be the maximum reverse charge current. And in this sample calculation, they want to stay within 0.7 microamps. And for safety reasons, in addition to the diode, there may be a resistor here in case the diode fails to help limit current. Otherwise, you can put two diodes in series, so there's at least some form of redundancy if one of them fails short. But again, we're dealing with now two diode drops below our starting 3 volts. What I've done on this new version of this board, here's the battery holder for the coin cell, and I have options here for a shot key diode for reverse current protection, and this ideal diode with an LM66100. So that's like the example having two diodes in series. But I wanted some other options, so if I don't want to use the 66100, I can bypass it putting a zero ohm jumper on R2. So then I have one diode, and I can populate this resistor with several hundred ohms or maybe over 1K, depending on what recommendations I follow. But for now, I don't have anything installed here, so I'm using the ideal diode, the 1N5711 shot key, and a zero ohm jumper here. But in order to do current measurements, I just remove this short and put a current meter here. So these are the battery connections on the motherboard where the 3.6 volt rechargeable used to be. So when the motherboard is powered on with my 286, I see around 4.8 volts present here. So with a 3 volt coin cell, these two diodes block that, and I have to make sure there's very minimal reverse leakage current getting from the motherboard to this CR2032. The 1N5711 can deal with 70 volts, so that's good for the motherboard, and it has low reverse current. Looking at some of these graphs for that diode, first, for the voltage drop we're going to be experiencing, if we assume we're going to operate worst case in this sort of temperature range, following this curve, if our battery backup is using 10 microamps, we're going to have less than a 0.2 volt drop across this shot key diode. And my motherboard draws 7 something microamps, so I'm in this range. And as for the reverse current, if we have around 5 volts on the motherboard when it's powered on, the reverse voltage will be somewhere down here. And again, if we're dealing with this kind of temperature range worst case, 50 to 75 degrees C, down at around 5 volts reverse voltage. Our reverse current, this here is 100 nanoamps, so if we allow up to 75 degrees C, we're still not quite 
400 nanoamps or 0.4 microamps of reverse current. So 0.4 microamps and this datasheet says we can do 1 microamp or this app note 0.7 microamps. We're within that as well. But if we're actually only at room temperature, we'd only be dealing with a couple of nanoamps of reverse current. Then looking at the ideal diode, the 66100, this is also an efficient device, low on resistance, low current consumption. And if we look at some of the characteristics, we're dealing with nanoamps for all of these operating currents, reverse leakage current at various temperatures, again, nanoamps, couple of hundred. But this being in series with that other Schottky diode, we're already also limiting in this range anyway, so we have redundancy with two of these devices. There's the block diagram of the ideal diode, so our battery input voltage has reverse polarity protection, and if the output voltage gets too high, it shuts this path down. So if we take the chip enable and connect it to V out, we get this device always on. So as long as we have a battery, it's going to act as an ideal diode with reverse current blocking. So if our Schottky diode somehow fails short and we get our 5 volt motherboard charging voltage present here, this channel will switch off and prevent reverse current. I've done some breadboard testing on this, as well as current and voltage measurements with this on the motherboard, and I don't really even see a voltage drop across this ideal diode at our 7 microamp battery backup load current, and I've seen between 150 and 180 millivolts dropped across this shot key. So that's probably the best we can do to preserve our initial battery voltage. And I just need to do some long-term testing to see how long this actually lasts. Here's a test setup with a voltmeter, not connected to anything right now, an ammeter in series with the output of the battery board. Right now there's no load at all, so just reading with probes being not connected to anything. So here's a 150k resistor. I'm going to put it between output and ground, and we have around 19.9 .9 microamps. If I put the voltmeter on the output, with load it's measuring 2.96 volts. Directly on the battery, 3.142 volts. So across those two diodes, it's about a 180 millivolt difference. And these probes in the breadboard are going to make it tip over. So that's why I have a load capacitor on the breadboard. So again, the battery itself is 3.142 volts right now. The output, 2.962 volts. If I connect up this 5.5 volts, and this meter used to show maybe between 30 to 50 or so nanoamps when nothing at all was connected to the probe, and now we're seeing maybe 50 to 80 nanoamps showing up. So measuring voltages on the output, of course, we have 5.5 volts that we are imposing with a power supply. On the battery itself, 3.144 volts. This is an old 286 motherboard where it used to have the rechargeable NICAD battery backup here. So I'm going to put this 2032 board in. And for now, I'm just going to lay it in those board holes. So by friction, it's making enough contact. I can put an ammeter in series with the two contacts here and complete the circuit and measure the current from the battery into the motherboard, not being powered right now, just on battery backup. And right now it's settling around 7.6 microamps to run battery backup. I'm going to put a brand new battery in because I've used that one up a bit for testing and I want to start fresh. Best before March of 2031. So this goes in like this. And for the starting conditions, the battery is 3.23 volts. And 
on the motherboard while drawing that seven something microamps and going through those two diodes, the battery backup voltage starts out at 3.078. Now it should be ready for a power on test. Battery voltage 3.23. Motherboard voltage 4.85 volts, which would be the battery charging voltage if this were the original battery. So the diodes are blocking the 5 volts from getting to the 3.23 volt battery. So we're running DOS 5 on this 286, and this is day 1, which is April 10th, 2024. So if I set the date, I can't use probably the 2000s with this old system. So let's go with 1980. The month is April. The day is the 10th of 80. Now it's April 22, so 12 days later, the battery is basically 3 volts, and the battery backup supply is 2.85. So now if I power up, it is retaining my CMOS settings and the date, but I was trying to track the time. I set it with a stopwatch 12 days ago, and now it lost about 43 seconds, so it's slowed down by 43 seconds. But I also did another test. I also left the motherboard powered on for half a day, and over that time frame, the clock actually was speeding up, so it was going into the future several seconds in half a day. So I'm not sure what that really means if this motherboard being, I think, close to 35 years old, if any of the parts are out of spec, basically it looks like it can't keep time, whether it's on battery backup or AC power. So I don't really think that's going to bother me. I just want it to retain settings so I don't have to tell it what hard drive or floppy drive or VGA keyboard present or absent sort of configuration I have every time I power up. So at least this gets things running smoother. And at this point, I'll power it down and I'll continue measuring the battery backup voltage periodically. So I'll put the results of ongoing measurements down in the description. But even if I only get a couple of months out of it, I'm not running this thing all the time anyway. But when I do want it set up on the bench like this, at least while I'm working with it, I want to be able to power cycle it and not have to reconfigure it every time. 